Anybody else want to comment on that? So the efforts of Bloom and his allies may be especially troubling to affinity organizations such as the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. For example, uh, the Chronicle of Higher Education on an October uh, 5th issue uh, reported on, on Ohio Senate Bill 83. In addition to the now standard efforts to ban most mandatory diversity training, prohibit the use of diversity statements in hiring or admissions, and preventing institutions from funding diversity offices, it would have required state institutions to ban affinity open quote, explicitly designed to segregate faculty, staff, or students by group identities such as race, sex, gender identity, or gender expression, close quote. This is interpreted as meaning groups such as SHIP, SWE, NSBE, et cetera, as well as faculty analogs, as well as ethnic housing or graduation events uh, would be outlawed. Therefore, the next question goes to SHIP CEO, Miguel Alemani. Uh, with the confirmed loss of affirmative action based on race, ethnicity, and college admissions, and the threatened loss for private scholarships and fellowships, how will you change strategy to ensure higher education access by your members? Thank you. That, there's. Um so about five or six ways to, uh, to answer that. And uh, you, you told me I can't talk more than 45 minutes, so I'll, <laughs> I'll try to be brief. Um, but I, let, me, let me just preface that for a second. You know, the, the, this law and the politicization of diversity that we're undergoing in this country is, is having an impact. But the large majority of companies, the smart companies, <coughs> they continue to do the right thing. And they're doing the right thing, by the way, not because it's the right thing, but because it is dollars and cents. It is a matter of money. When you have an organization and everybody is the same, your solutions are gonna, not gonna be as good as you have diversity of thought, diversity of points of view. So companies like, like, like Boeing, like Procter & Gamble, like Johnson & Johnson, they will continue seeking out minority students no matter what because they need that for their, for their workforce. So, so that side of the equation is gonna be okay. We are having issues, however, in schools because we're seen as, a, as an organization that has to be banned. And to that, we're doing two things. Uh, number one is we, we've been working with the legisl legislations that are passing, particularly in Texas and in, uh, in Florida and a couple other states, to soften the language of the bills because we are making the case that we are helping the domestic workforce of this country get the right number of STEM and engineers and scientists that they need. So the companies don't have to import from another country. And that seems to resonate with the same people who are anti-diversity. They, they, they start, they make them think, you know, if you block African Americans, Hispanics, and all these people from getting help and getting education, you're gonna to have to go out to another country to find engineers to bring it because you're not gonna have sufficient engineers in, 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 uh, in the country. That has been reasonably successful, uh, fairly successful in Florida, uh, and less successful in, in, in Texas, but we continue. We have to change our strategy. We have to make sure that, that the government, both sides of government understand that when they do that, when they put blocks to minorities progressing, they're shooting themselves in the foot because they're affecting the domestic workforce of the country, weakens the country. The, the last thing that I, that I would add is, is we have to um, go out of our way to make sure that we, we pick up the slack that is created when governments get out of the game. So we have to make sure that the minorities are going to go into college, that they're gonna be supported while they're in college, that they're gonna get a job when they graduate, you know, career fairs, scholarships, and support. So we have to literally double our mission to make sure that nobody gets left behind. That, by the way, I, I believe is also fairly successful, and we just issued a, um, a study uh, two weeks ago, and we're looking at, at longitudinal um, assessment of Hispanics in STEM, particularly Hispanics, and our success rate has doubled in the last 10 years. Our, our, our percent of Hispanics in STEM is, is, is almost, it's 99.7% higher, almost 100% higher. Additionally, uh, SHEP has, has done a, a, a multi-year study. Um, students that join SHEP graduate at a significantly higher percentage than, than I mean, higher rate than, than non-members. Non and they look at Hispanics themselves, 50% of Hispanics do not graduate from college. They enter, but they, they drop out. 
If you're a SHEP member, that number goes up to 80% graduates. So it's a significant difference. So if, if the government can't have their hands tied in, in these things, we're going to be at the table and we're going to pick up the slack and we're going to deliver that to maintain the momentum. So it it's just makes our job more difficult, but we'll do it. Thank you.